Please join me in the call to worship. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. O Lord, our Lord, from you we receive what we need for living. O Lord, our Lord, to you we offer our worship and adoration. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 262, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord. Hymn number 262. as we pray together. Today, O oh God, we seek your presence to be reminded that we come from you, our Creator. Be present with us, we pray. Today, O oh God, we seek your wisdom to be reminded that we are guided by you. Grant us wisdom for the living of our days. Today, O oh God, we seek your love to be reminded that we are loved by you. Love us and teach us how to love you by loving one another. These things we pray in the name of our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, God always honors those who seek what they need from God. Thanks be to God.
Today's responsive reading is from Psalm 36. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like great You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the of life. In your light we see light. O continue your steadfast love to those who know you. Your salvation to the upright of heart. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Amen. Amen.
Today's reading is from John 2, verses 1 through 11. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymn is number 307, All Creatures of Our God and King. Hymn number 307.
Today's New Testament reading is perhaps one of the most curious in Scripture. I mean, after all, when you look at this story, it is the story of Jesus' first miracle according to John, and it happens with the making of wine after people are already drunk. Now, that doesn't make for a good argument with the temperance crowd, and while it might be popular with those who are fans of wine, some of us think Jesus would have been better off to use the water to make beer or brown liquor. That likely would have made the crowd just as happy or happier. The other piece of the story that also is curious is that at least by today's standards, we find Jesus being pretty sassy with his mother talking to her in a way that most of us wouldn't appreciate a child addressing a parent. And yet, this story has to be there for a reason. It has to be there to tell us something of value. I often find with stories like this that at least for my mind, it's easier to back into them by determining what the story is not trying to tell us. And I'm fairly certain that we don't need this story to tell us that people who have had enough to drink sometimes want more, even if they've already had too much. I don't think we need the story for that. I also don't think we need the story to tell us that mothers usually always believe that their sons possess the capacity to solve the world's problems if the world would only listen to them. But if that's not what the story is telling us, what is it telling us? I think as much as anything else, this is a story that exists to remind us of the importance of celebration with the significant people in your life. Just the fact that Jesus is present at this celebration says something about his value of taking the special moments of life and letting them be celebrated in significant ways with significant people. The southern novelist Walker Percy often said that the most difficult thing to get through in most lives is an ordinary Tuesday afternoon. And I agree with Percy. I think the way that we get through those ordinary Tuesday afternoons is by making sure that at some point in our life we have places for celebrations. Whether it's a wedding or an anniversary or just some way that we can celebrate something significant with people that matter, that is one of the ways I think we get through those ordinary days of life. And I think this story is here to remind us of the importance of celebrating with significant people in our lives. I also think the story is there to remind us of the importance of our participation in accomplishing the miraculous. If you look at the way this miracle happens, you'll notice that even though Jesus' mother seems to believe he could just create wine, that's not what happens. Instead, he gives directions to other people who are a part of the celebration to do their part in helping to create the wine. And so what you have here is a picture of how the miraculous always involves a community effort. Jesus' mother believed he could do something. Jesus believed that those who were around him could help him accomplish it. And together they did accomplish a miracle. Sometimes I think we wonder why the miraculous doesn't happen more often among us today. And maybe this is the reason. Maybe it is because we are looking for an outside force to somehow intervene in our world and do something that we don't think we can do for ourselves when we need to be reminded that the miraculous happens 
when all of us are doing what we can do to make a difference in the needs of our world. When all of us give the efforts that we have toward a single cause, then that thing can happen. Then the miraculous occurs among us. And I think this story is here to remind us that we must participate in the miraculous if it's going to happen. That God alone does not do things in the way that we often think that God should, but God does things through the efforts that we offer that can make a difference in our world. And I also think this story is here to remind us of the importance of offering one's best to people in need. Whatever else Jesus is doing by giving drunk people even better wine than they'd had before, He is making sure that His best effort goes in to what they receive. And isn't that what we all want to do? When people ask something of us, isn't it always better if we've done our best, knowing that when that has been done, there is no more we can do. There is no more that can be asked of us. Our effort alone may not be enough, but if we've given our best, we've done all that we can. And I think this story is here to remind us of the importance of offering our best to people in need. And so it's a lot of talk in this story about sassy sons and drunk people and new wine and wine that is even better than wine they've had before. But what is this story here to encourage us to do? What is it from this story that we can take when we leave this place today and make a part of our journey in the coming week? Well, I think at least this. We all need to celebrate. We all need to find those places and things in life that can lift our spirits and lighten our mood and help us to get through our ordinary days. We need to find the chances to celebrate. We need to take the opportunity to have a party. We need to know that God is as interested in that from us as God is interested in anything else from us. This story reminds us of our own need to celebrate. And I think also reminds us of our need to expect and to help make the miraculous happen. Whatever it is we can do, we ought to do. Whatever it is we're gifted with, we ought to offer to places of need and people in need and let it make the difference that it can make. And I think the story is also there to remind us that we need to offer people in need the best we possibly can. When we've offered our best, we can offer no more. When we've offered our best, we have done what we can do. And if the story reminds us of nothing else, perhaps that is what it is there for. I hope that God will give us the courage to find places to celebrate life. And God will give us the desire to offer ourselves to help make the miraculous happen. And God will always encourage us to give our best to people in need. Amen. We're going to receive an offering at this time. May God bless the gifts that you've brought to give this day.